Today you're going to be taking Cornell notes on population dynamics. This is chapter five in your textbook. Remember that when you take Cornell notes, you take notes on the right side of the line that you draw. On the left side, you need to write questions that could be answered by what's in your notes. And then you need to have a summary at the end. If you look at this picture, it should look very familiar. This is a graph of the activity that you did in the predator-prey simulation with wolves and rabbits. Pay close attention to what happens when each population rises and when they fall. What might be causing that drop in population size? So first we need to define what a population is. A population is any group of organisms of the same species living within a particular area. An example of this might be polar bears living in Alaska, trout living in Lake Tahoe, or humans living in Belmont, or even all of California. Populations are always changing. They are dynamic. So there's always an increase and decrease in the population. There are a few things, a few factors, that affect population size. These are terms that you need to know. First is mortality. Mortality is the number of individuals in a population that die. Next, we have natality. That's the number of individuals that are born. This word might sound a little bit familiar if you've heard of like neonatal care. So natal is birth. Next, we have immigration. These are organisms that enter a population. And next, emigration organisms that leave a population. Now, sometimes you might get confused between immigration, spelt with an I, and emigration, spelt with an E. The way I remember which one's which is immigration with an I is when organisms are going into a population. So immigration with an I, into with an I. And then emigration is exiting, so leaving a population. So that's how I remember which one's which. So next we have growth rate. So the growth rate is measured by the amount of organisms that are immigrating or coming into a population, as well as natality, the number of organisms born. And then you subtract those that are emigrating or exiting a population, plus mortality, those that are dying. And populations grow in different ways. So one way is exponential growth. And this is where each generation, the population doubles as long as there are no limits on growth. So if you look at this chart, this shows bacteria growth over time, over hours. And you can see that this population is growing exponentially. It is basically doubling as it, over time as it's going up. So it's, that curve is just kind of going almost straight up, like at a diagonal, but it's, this is exponential growth. And it's going to keep growing as long as there aren't any limits that are going to stop their growth. Human population growth, if you look at this, this is an example of exponential growth. Right now, we are about here with our population. World population reached 1 billion people in 1804. It took 123 years for it to double, then 33 years. 14 years, 13 years, 12 years to go up each billion. So unless we reduce our growth rate very soon, our population's going to reach 7 billion in 2013. Okay, we're actually there. Um, 8 billion in 2028 and 9 billion in 2054. So our population is going up increasingly exponentially. And this could end up being a problem because there are going to be limits on our growth. So can population grow without limits? There are things called limiting factors. And limiting factors are anything that can limit how big a population gets. And there are two types, so abiotic limiting factors and biotic limiting factors. Remember, we have heard the words abiotic and biotic before. Bio means life. So a biotic factor is a living factor. An abiotic factor is something without life. So abiotic limiting factors that affect population growth would be the amount of water available, the amount of living space that we have, 
the weather, natural disasters, these are all things that can limit population growth. There are also biotic or living things that can limit be limiting factors for population growth. One is competition. Competition is where there are contests among organisms to get the resources that they need to survive. Predation is the feeding of one organism on another, and we looked at that with our predator-prey simulation. What, was, what did the limiting factors, what, what happened to the population over time? How come their population didn't just keep growing exponentially? And then the third limiting factor, biotic limiting factor, is parasitism, where parasites live in or on a host, and they can cause the host to get weak and be unable to live as strongly or as well, and that can limit the population growth. So growth with limits. When a population reaches its limits, the growth curve we see is called a logistical curve, or logistical growth. So if you look at the chart down on the bottom right of your screen, you can see that it doesn't just keep going up, 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 up. It gets to a point where it kind of bottoms out, like it, it can't keep going anymore. It just goes off to the side horizontally. When it reaches this point, it can't grow past that limit, and that is when it reaches what's called its carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the number of individuals that the ecosystem can support. Now, next, there are people who study populations, and this is called demography. Demography is the study of populations. Go ahead and look at this graph. If you studied this graph, okay, look at the x-axis, look at the y-axis, make comparisons, look at, be sure you look at the key. What do you notice about these two populations? What are some things you can infer based on this data? What are some of the differences between the populations in Mexico versus the United States based on age, based on gender? Are there limits to human population growth? Yes, space. We are running out of space and habitat for us to live. We're also running out of natural resources. And there are two different types of natural resources that can limit population growth for humans. First is renewable resources. These are resources that can, we can keep getting or coming back. So food or trees. We can chop down a tree, but we can plant and grow more. It does take time, but those are renewable resources. Next, we have non-renewable resources. These are resources that we, once we use, we can't get them back, such as land, water, minerals, metals, and oil. So what I'd like for you to do for your summary today. Your summary is going to take up an entire page of your notes. So turn to the next page in your notebook. You need an entire blank page. And you're going to copy down this chart. And it's going to have four boxes or four squares. They're going to be titled with population, exponential growth, what is the logistical growth, and when does it occur? And what are two factors that limit human population growth? What you're going to do for each of these is you're going to write at the bottom a definition or an explanation or an answer to the title. So population would be a definition. Exponential growth, you can have a definition or explanation of what it is. Um, same with logistical growth, you're going to answer that. And then answer what are the two, what are two factors that limit population growth. Then you're going to have a picture that represents each of those or a graph that represents the two graph type um, terms here. And this is going to be your summary today for your notes. Be sure to put your questions in your left-hand column, though, for your Cornell notes.